When I first got this Ball Engineer Hydrocarbon Original in, there were quite a few things going through my head. This watch is extremely over-engineered, and while it is a dive watch, it doesn't have one of those pesky helium release valves, which is a plus in my book. But it does have a lot of shock resistance built into both the watch case and the movement, as well as a very nifty crown protector and a heavily modified COSC ETA 2836 movement. And possibly the coolest aspect, flat tritium tubes sandwiched underneath the dial as well as the sapphire bezel. It's also listed as a 40mm watch, which definitely is not the case at all. This crazy and beautiful watch doesn't come cheap either at about $3,300, so let's get into it and talk all about this hydrocarbon original. Now there are a lot of these ball watches with this style crown protector, and this one is probably the tamest of them all, as just taking a look on the ball website will show you all the versions, many with chronograph complications or very busy dials, and sizes going up to 48 millimeters. So this hydrocarbon original is one of the more subdued versions, yet this watch is anything but plain looking. Some of you also may be wondering, why am I reviewing this watch now instead of a few years ago when it came out? The simple answer is, I am waiting on a newer release from Ball. This GMT Explorer looking piece, but there have been delays with movements and such, and they just can't get one out to me yet. So in the meantime, I took a look through their catalog to see what else I could review, and I realized I have not reviewed any of this style of model, so I had them send this one along. And man, this one is loaded up as far as the spec sheet. It's a base ETA 2836 movement, but you have the patented spring seal and spring lock system, and going even further, an amortizer or amortizer anti-shock system that surrounds the movement to absorb large impacts. As with a lot of ball watches, the movement is COSC certified as well, but still only a power reserve of 38 hours. It's also anti-magnetic to 80,000 gauss, and that crown protector can withstand 1,400 newtons of force, but it doesn't say how many fig newtons it could withstand. It's also shock resistant to 7,500 Gs. And that is all very quite impressive, even if we really don't understand it all. But basically, this watch is built to take a lot of abuse and impact, at least to the movement and that crown protector. The hydrocarbon original I have here has a black sunray dial that will of course look gray sometimes, a day date, some technical info of course, and the coolest part of the dial is that sandwich dial, which is not uncommon these days at all, but it's not a dial painted with super luminova underneath, no, underneath those cutouts are flat tritium tubes which is just kind of crazy as they don't look like tubes at all and it does look like standard loom underneath. This technology continues on to the sapphire bezel and you really have to think about how this bezel is constructed with what I assume is a base of some kind inside, then the tritium or maybe a tritium platform, and then the sapphire insert with the cutouts. Of course, that makes the bezel pretty thick, but that thickness does allow a great purchase on the coin edge, and while there is more than enough purchase area, the bezel itself doesn't have the greatest feeling. It's a little sloppy, not as tight and precise as I was expecting. Another key feature is of course that crown guard. I will admit this is a pretty cool looking crown guard and it's easy to flip it off and get to the crown. You just push this little button, it pops off, and you lever it down towards you, and now you can access the crown. The crown itself has a phenomenal feeling, just very precise and changing the time or date or winding. It just has that satisfying feeling. You know this is going to hold up over time. Closing the crown guard, you just flip it back and lock it into place. Now I will say though, because the crown guard flips down to you and not outward from the crown, it does tend to get in your way a little when using the crown. And as much Newton force of impact this crown guard can apparently take, I do wonder how that hinge will hold up over time when it's being tapped and moved by your hands every time you need to change the time or the date, or if you're someone that prefers to wind that movement 
you know, by winding it mainly every other day. The top of the case is all brushed and the sides, the crown protectors, and the center sections and edges of the bracelet are all high polished. I'll talk more about that shortly, but that's a lot of high polish for such an extreme tool watch, is it not? This is an all 316L steel watch as well, not 904L, not titanium, and no hard coating in any way that I am aware of. So let's talk about that size because there are actually two sizes of this piece listed at 40 millimeter and 43 millimeter. Looking at pics on the website, it was hard to gauge size. So with so many people, not all, I said many, preferring watches in the 40 millimeter range, I thought, let's do the 40. Well, I'm glad I opted for that one because this is no 40 millimeter. It's a solid 42. Now, why is it listed at 40? Well, if you measure the case, which is difficult to do in one area, you'll get 40 millimeter. But the bezel actually measures in at 42.5 millimeters. And then if you measure west to east, including those crown guards, it's 47 millimeters across. Add in that almost 15 millimeters of thickness, and this is not a svelte watch by any means. So how does that translate to my seven and a half inch or 19.05 centimeter wrist? Well, for me, even with that 51 millimeter lug to lug, this is a very wearable piece as far as size. As a matter of fact, it really does fit very well in my wrist, very balanced. And even with the protruding crown guard, it doesn't feel like I'm wearing an Invicta from 20 years ago. Yeah, don't tell anyone, but yeah, I used to wear very large Invicta watches. But give me a break, I was in my late teens and early 20s. Okay, well, into my late 20s. Stop judging. Joking aside, I have a feeling the 43 millimeter would have felt and looked very different on the wrist. And what about this bracelet? Well, even with this big buckle, it doesn't feel as heavy as I thought it would, yet it does balance the case well, which is not top heavy. This is a fancy deployment buckle as I call it, and on a watch such as this, it would normally not be my preference, but there are half links on both sides, and there are micro adjust holes in the clasp piece as well, and also extensions on both sides, which I assume are for fitting over a wetsuit, so you can really dial in that perfect fit. And while that clasp is chunky, it's much shorter than a lot of fold over locking clasps, so it is taking up less real estate on the underside of your wrist. And of course, we have the loom. Well, as I have talked about with Ball, Knight, Marathon, any watch using tritium, it's hard to capture tritium on camera because tritium glows best in pitch black darkness. But this watch does actually glow in low light, better than other tritium models I have owned and reviewed. And man, there's just no denying how cool it looks in the dark. And since it's tritium, it's going to always glow without a light source needed. But it does have a shelf life, of course. And after 10 years, it's going to start to fade as far as the brightness goes. Obviously, there is a lot going on with this ball. And one could say this model, as well as a lot of ball watches, is feature packed. And they would be correct. All of the shock resistance to the movement and the case, the shock resistance to the case and the crown protector, the crown protector itself, and the way that they integrated the tubes in the dial and the bezel. It's all very cool. But I do have a few gripes, and keep in mind, like most gripes, these are, of course, subjective. What is with all the high polish? Look, Watches scratch, unless they have some scratch-resistant coating or treatment done to them. And those scratch too, it's just less noticeable, or it depends on the medium you bumped it against. But look, brushed finishes just show scratches less. High-polished surfaces show scratches, even the tiny ones, and they just look like crap after a while. And this piece has that high polish everywhere. And with this not-so-small watch that is so filled with all this anti-shock protection technology, it's meant to be used and abused and to take it. But what will it look like if you treat it like that, not have it wrapped in a condom at all times? The use of high polish is my only real gripe. The bezel could be a little tighter feeling, but other than that, this is a very cool, very usable, and very capable watch. But that's my opinion, and I want to hear yours. 
Sound off in the comments if you own one, you want to own one, will never own one. Either way, I would love to hear your thoughts on this piece. And when you're done chastising me, you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and turn on notifications if you haven't already. And of course, please share this video on your social media and groups. It's greatly appreciated, free, and only takes a moment. There is a written review for this piece as well. It's linked down in the description, as well as a link to this watch on the Ball website. This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.